Deontay Johnson on the outside. He may not be the most talented receiver, but I think he's their top receiver with Pickens being, I think, the most talented. You talk to the coordinators and the head coach, right, for every single game? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so tell me about this match. You know what I mean? I don't know him at all. All I know is Pittsburghers hate him. That's all. The answers hate this guy. The offense is boring. We're the only team not to put up 400 yards in the last three years, literally in the entire NFL. Yeah. Kenny Pickett was something special in the preseason. Now they're terrible. The offense is stale. We see people like McDaniel do things with Tyree where it's like guaranteed completions, guaranteed yardages. We see those. They just never have. What is he like behind the scenes? What is he like as a human? Who is he? He's a great guy. Okay, uh, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, All right, so it's never sport. personal, Matt. Never yeah. personal. No, no, I, I think he's a good dude. He was he was at Indiana just after I was our director, Derek Miley's from Indiana. We talked Bloomington, Indiana. Hell yeah. Uh, I, I think he's he's frustrated, uh, obviously, with the way they started. Um, I, I think he's chalking this up as a one-off. He hopes for Kenny Pickett, week one. Um, they did finish well last year. I mean, you have to give them and him credit for that. Uh, but now it's time to get back to that. Uh, so, you know, how good's the offensive line? How good's the left tackle? Is Pickens there every play? Um, I don't know. And and I think, you know, he's, he's calling plays and I think still trying to figure out exactly what he has to use. But, I mean, yeah, I read the same stuff. That everybody's on his back here in Pittsburgh and, you know, hopefully tonight will be better night. I hope so for him because it sounds like he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah that's right. He's a great guy. we got to remember that. Gotta remember. People in Pittsburgh are potentially watching. He's, he's a person. He's, he's a person. Well, he's not going to call him plays. He's going yeah. 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 to probably going to make it sandwiches. He's going to drop down for Rance or Rudy. He's going to do the whole thing. But call him plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Yeah. He seems like, bad. seems like a bad fit. What's, what is the fans in them saying about DJ Watt? Because last week, obviously, it doesn't get talked about because it was just a blowout. He has three sacks, two forced fumbles. Who cares? Steelers lose. Let's move on. He's an alien. It's not a Are the other teams talking about these two guys? I assume it's such. You know, I've got... Oh, you can't see it. I've heard out the background because I thought it was just the damn jelly. You do. You do, by the way. Very, very yeah, 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 absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Uh, DeJuan Jones is, is this fourth-round pick from Ohio State. And uh, I, I said to uh, I said to Mike Tomlin when we talked to him, what kind of a night is DeJuan Jones making his first NFL start going to have uh, with T.J. Watt across from him? And he said, they're not going to make the same mistake they made a couple of years ago on Monday night when they had this guy, uh, James Hudson, who's kind of their swing tackle, uh, make a start. T.J. Watt had four sacks. So DeJuan Jones is going to have a lot of help uh, when – I, I think every time they snap the ball, T.J. Watt, as we know, is a game wrecker, and I, they're not going to leave him on an island in his first NFL start taking on T.J. Watt. That's good to hear, because some coaches will do that. Yeah. And then the internet's like, why are we expecting this guy to block T.J. Watt? And on the flip side, Miles Garrett was just like, in a, J.J. Watt, right? another Watt, right. described that as just being in the zone, having a feeling as if nobody can block him. If I was Miles Garrett, who can dunk at 6'4", 275, and everything he can do, I would feel like nobody can block me as well. What is Pittsburgh saying about Miles Garrett and how you stop him? Impossible. So he can go over and do whatever he can. Yeah, I, yeah, I think he's different than all these other guys. You know, Jim Schwartz coached Javon Kurtz, and, and, you know, when somebody has the nickname to free, they're obviously different because of the size, the bend, what they can do with their feet. You know, like Schwartz said, he can change direction like a defensive back, Miles Garrett. He can beat you with power. He can beat you with speed. He can come at you with power and change the speed. He can come at you with speed, change the power. Uh, Jim Schwartz said, of all the guys I've coached, Miles Garrett, with what he's seen since he got hired in January or February, I guess it was February, he has the chance to be on the top of the list of the guys he's ever had. So I, I mean, I, and, and by the way, we will love this. If these guys don't celebrate after they make a defensive play, Jim Schwartz counts it as a low. He wants them to go crazy after plays. This is a Cleveland defense that is going to be fun to watch all year. Yeah, Pittsburgh Steelers fans are pumped to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Pumped to hear that. Go ahead, AJ. So speaking with uh, some of the Cleveland coaches and players, do you sense hey, is it any different than years uh, previous to Cleveland? I feel like there's a lot more optimism. I know we're early in the season, but people feel like, hey, they can maybe put this thing together. Yeah, I do. Um, I do. I mean, it's the 
Stefanski went to the playoffs his first year. He was brought in to fix Baker Mayfield. And they went through a couple of rough years. Yeah. What happened there? Uh, what, and he's, what? he's two and zero with the Bucks. That's, that's what happened. Yeah, you're right. He's two and zero with the Bucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Bird. Uh, <laughs> got a big week, so I'm I'm playing nice, and I actually really like. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think they do sense that, you know, Watson had no chance with the suspension, being out of the building, coming in, had played basically two years, has six games. Um, we'll see. I mean, game one was not a statistical foul <laughs> day for Sean Watson, but it was a, a constant rain in Cleveland. I think we'll get a better sense tonight uh, when we talk to Deshaun that he feels like he's the leader that he needs to be and in charge of things. We'll just see tonight. What? I mean, what? Pat, you look like you're ready to jump. No, oh, no, I'm just trying to hear it. I'm just taking it. Cramp? I'm just taking it. Cramp it up? I'm taking in what you're saying, man. I'm taking in what you're saying. You know, you had a, you're, you're giving a lot of good gospel right there. You know, you're just, my worry yeah. about Stefanski was they get to the playoffs, they win a playoff game against Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh his first year there, and then seemingly it all just from the inside. Odell Beckham Sr. Odell Beckham Jr. Odell Beckham Sr. is putting together videos. He becomes an editor. He gets his son out of there. He's gone. Uh, Baker Mayfield getting no high fives from anybody down there. You know, Stefanski's like, yeah, he can't throw. We know he can't throw. Then next game against the Steelers, he has him throw 75 times to kind of make him look bad. So it's like, Stefanski, I think, has been judged mostly by us about everything that has kind of happened around having a pretty good team. Now it feels like it's his team, right? This feels like his group. It feels like the one that they think they, have, that's what kind of they don't thinking. have to rely on one facet to carry them. They can win a game with their defense. They can win a game with their ground game. They can win a game, I think, time will tell, uh, if Watson gets back into form, he's completely passes at 70% as last year in Houston. They have Amari Cooper, who they think will play tonight. Whoa, 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 Shefty. Shefty said he didn't think he was going to play. Wow. You're saying he did. Yeah, I read, that. I read that tweet. I'm just telling you what the fans have to Oh, Yo. okay. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe Stefanski didn't read Shefty's tweet. <laughs> You watch practice, Joe? Distance uh, two miles. Duration twenty three minutes. <laughs> Pace eight minutes. Fifty six okay. seconds per mile. Two hundred sixty seven kilo calories burned. Like tea. Yeah, right. That's how that would be described. I've got a cough. It's either this or like cough up a piece of my left lung as we're talking on national television. What do you do whenever you lose your voice in the middle of it? Are you a tea guy, coffee guy, any spray? Suck my thumb, cry, uh, worry, get a steroid shot, uh, whatever it takes. I've only lost it one time. I mean, I had the, the hair plug thing, you know, years, years ago. They look good! Ah. They look good! They look real good. I, I went under and I came out talking like this. And I went for nine months sounding like I was dying. So this is nothing. This, this is not how much I deserved it. Yeah, see, I, I, you know what? I said that to very much like McConaughey. I said that to McConaughey and the Ben, not to name drop, but it kind of fits in the story. And uh, I, I said, you know, I was maybe poking around for a little information. It was, uh, what happened to your voice there, Buck the Root? Whoa. And I said, well, I. I said, uh, well, I went in for, for hair transplants, and I came out, and I, now I sound like this. He goes, well, so what you're saying is, you fixed your video and effed up your audio. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. That guy's the best. Yeah. That guy is the ass. We got to see him down at that Texas, Alabama. <laughs> he was everything that they say he is. Yeah. He was awesome. He's intense, man. He, he is intense. And if you're ever just having a casual, casual conversation with him, you use the word can't, but like stop you. You never use the word can't. You know, man. <laughs> you can't. You can't. There's a, there he is. Look at, look at that. There's a, yeah, one of the greatest catches I've ever seen with these two guys <laughs> <laughs> four feet in front of us in that Matthew McConaughey. He got a promo pretty much. Yeah. It was, it was awesome. How the hell... How the hell did one concentrate worthy with you and AJ? I mean, all look at that. Look what he's looking at. And he caught the ball. Okay, listen. I mean, my God. 
Yeah. Yeah. Don't get confused either. Josh the sheriff was dog. Yeah, you was. know, he was radiating some good yeah. vibes. Yeah. But it was magnetic. Yeah. Yeah. But he literally, that ball was a punt, and he was running. And I think we all just assumed we were going to get the ball because it was going to hit the ground and bounce right into us. And when he tracked it, what an electrifying run. It ended up on a Today Show. Yeah. They were talking about on the Today Show. We're on the Today Show, Joe. Super famous, no big deal. Congrats. Thank you. Not, not drinking Third tea. hour? Third hour? No. no. Second hour. Uh, we weren't drinking tea, saying we're not traveling to Cleveland. But, I mean, we were on the Today Show, which is beautiful. It's not going to, as a, it could be any city. It has nothing to do. Don't take it that way. Oh, well. Oh, no. It's the visiting team. It could be the 49ers. It could be, well, it could be, well, it matter. They, they could be, they could be in my back guard. And I might not have to Okay, got it. Well, I'm happy we did both of because in my head, it was just like, okay. John. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. My, my whole, my dad's family's here. Of no. course! No. You want to go see the family? Jack's yeah. Casino's up there, too. They give out money. Oh, they all hate me. They hate me because of the 2016 World Series. I've got I've got oh, relatives yeah. who I'm sure have been on Twitter like, you suck, you're rooting for the Cubs. Schwarber, you love Schwarber, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know how that goes. Well, hold on, now. Let's talk about that because that's been your life for a long time. Gary says it's what you're doing. You know, we, I mean, we're truly your friends. You know, we're basically the same age. Uh, he works his ass off. He gets prepared. He prepares like a play-by-play -play guy. He's like, he's bored by the time my jam pack is done, his jam pack is done. I know he's never mailing it. And from day one, he's known that I've had his back, and, and I know vice versa. So, you know, it's a weird business, and, and I feel like you can tell with the play-by-play -play guy and the animal you know, Get along. Oh yeah. And yeah. The good, yeah. I mean, the good thing is, you know, with the switch to ESPN, if it was fake and we didn't want to continue working together, he went, and then I had to get out of my deal at Fox to get over there. So it wouldn't have happened. So we, we it, it, the proof is in the fact that I jumped ship and came over here, and I, I couldn't be happier uh, to join him and do Monday Night Football. Uh, it's so uh, we, we truly like each other. Well, that's a big, big one. Yep. That's good. We hope you enjoy the hell out of yourself. We appreciate the fact you got your voice back. And also, we can't wait to see the brand new Chris Stapleton. Yeah. Ah, this is good. Oh, Stapleton. that's awesome. Ah, uh, it's all we got to do. Uh, Stapleton, our producer, Steve Ackles, and our music department just crushed it. So it's a great way to come on here. Yeah, I didn't even know that there was a new one coming. I don't think any of us knew. Did we know this? No. No. We're working on it over in the side lab. Sunset just yet appropriate for an older quarterback coming to a new team, but now we're rolling starting tonight with In the Air Tonight covered by Chris. Ooh. Yes, we can feel it coming. Get out. Uh, oh, we, oh, oh, we oh, feel it coming. Yeah. Especially tonight. Yeah. Yeah. See, North, it's going to come big. It's going to come strong. And it's coming tonight. We appreciate the hell out of you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, does video and audio fantastic. Joe Buck. It, free wheeling from the hip, it's what we do. We love Tony Rambo on a microphone. That was the best ever. <laughs> like, I, I really don't know if I could ever want, like, I don't know how you can exceed that. That is the pinnacle of calling an NFL game, just being in your bag, so deep, just not caring about anything. And then he obviously crushes it. He knocks it out of the park. Here's what Ty Schmidt is talking about as Tony Rambo voices over a Dan Quinn shot from the booth. Thousand times. I don't remember exactly what he okay. said because I was laughing 
so hard just the entire time, but he basically, you know, Nick went up there and just kind of, you know, I start breaking my leather shoes. Yeah! Come on! Let's go! He said something like that, and then, to you guys' point about guys, you know, seemingly, they're, you know, maybe not on the same page, Nance, without a hesitation, it's just like, yeah, sounds just like him, and then goes right on to the <laughs> He was... Uh, again, they love each other. They do. said that many Whoa. times, but it seemed like yesterday. He's like, okay, you just gotta. I'm gonna give Tony the rock, and I'm just gonna let him get shot. Tony Romo's got a beard going right now. Oh, he's good. good. I love everything about him. Yeah. Tony Romo, boy, what a story. You know, I assume we're gonna experience similar things. At the beginning, Tony Romo is the greatest of all time. Yeah, best to ever do it. This guy's the best of all time. Yeah. He's telling us what Tom Brady's gonna do before Tom Brady does it. Yeah. This guy's smarter than Tom Brady. This guy is. Mm -hmm. Holy hell. Our guy, who appears to be like our uncle, who happens to be a freak athlete, if you put him in a basketball game, he's unbelievable. Ping pong, outstanding. Golf. Obviously, football, good golf. This guy's a professional. This is a super athlete somehow yeah. in all of our uncle's bodies, pretty much. Yeah. His basic ass uncle's body. This guy's here. Gets in the booth. Relatable, funny, quick, energetic, calling out things. Holy hell, this guy's changing the game. They pay him $700 million yeah. to call games. And Troy Aikman's like, wait a minute. All right, sweet. Thank you. We will do yeah. what he just did. Let's go ahead and move on. And then season two came around, Ooh. and everybody was like, what the fuck? Three, three oh, yeah. miles. Duration, 31 minutes, 47 seconds. Pace, eight minutes, 49 seconds per mile, 385 kilo calories burned. Exact same guy. When everybody was seemingly turning on him quickly, loudly, he did not care. Stayed the exact same. And then now he's on the other side of it. Sick. Maybe the most Tony Romo, yeah. Tony Romo has ever been right now. Whenever he did Dan Quinn thing, I find that admirable, and I will always be a big fan. Yeah, I love it. You could you could argue that the first year he was doing it, when everyone was saying he was so good, like he hated it. And now he's like actually having fun and enjoying it quite a bit. I mean, yeah, I, I get it. Now Michael's friend of the program, like unbelievable. Do you believe in miracles? You know the the bet car call. That's the gold standard. I don't think anyone will ever top what Tony Romo did yesterday. The no, it's hard town. It's hard town. See, that's good. It's good. But is it that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. You know, Romo kind of gives himself the opportunity to one-up himself every single week. But I just don't know. It'll be a recurring thing. It'll be a recurring segment he does. That's yeah. what, what, breaking down, voicing over things? Yeah. yeah. Tony does it. So, I mean, that's the thing on the internet people do. Let's have Tony do it live during games. Fans? Don't just have to be coaches. No. No. Oh, anybody. Get a pre record Chain of gang, a fan. Anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Ch guys working at chains. How's that still a thing? 2020. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Of course. Mm -hmm. I can't take it anymore. Tell me. Today we're taking a stand. We are no longer allowing those chains to be an actual thing. Okay? Inside chain. We can bring them out if we want to do a song and dance. Yep. Okay. Talk about it all. But we cannot have that being how we're deciding a first down in 2023. When they told us openly there are chips inside the football. Right. Yeah. There are chips in the football. Just do it. Just do it. What are we even talking about? Well, it's like not tennis, right? What's it called? Yeah. Tennis. When they, yeah. when, they, when they go to the bar? Yeah. Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye. Couldn't they do that? I don't remember who told us this. Okay. Jamie. I thought that was for soccer. It was Marty Fish, I think, said that, right? Yes. I don't know if it's Marty Fish. McEnroe, Marty Fish, somebody in the tennis community that knows tennis a lot better than us said that, yeah, but there's a lot of questions on whether or not that's accurate. Everybody just treats this gospel. It's like, of course there is. Yeah. Of course there's, like, conspiracies about, like, dump, dump, there's no way that's accurate. My eyes saw it out of bounds. They put it in bounds. That thing can't be right. Everybody acts as if it's 100%. So if we're in a tennis community, I assume we would do the same thing. It's just like reviews. Yes. There's been some reviews that have happened where the whole world sees one thing and the people making decisions see the other thing. I don't know how that happens either. You know what I mean? Like, how is that taking place? Week one, it was Saints, right? Yeah. It was Saints. Yeah, Derek Carr. Derek Carr with the fumble, which would have changed the touchdown. A lot of things in there. It's like, how is that still happening? We blame the rest of the field, don't we? Don't we blame the rest of the field when really the ones making the decision are back to court and telling them what the decision is? How often are they dropping into their ears, too? You know, because we do. What well, they do right, though. They do right to come back when they know it's a switch deal. You know, they, they tell them, hey, no, we're good. It's first down or whatever. They don't go take the whole three or four minutes. And the refs say, after further discussion, yeah. we assume after further discussion in 2023, although in the past it might have been just amongst themselves, there is another person coming in to the discussion through everybody's ears. It's like, like kind of mic'd up. So I appreciate them doing that. I think we've been pushing that for the longest. Again. The next player. <laughs>